Why would an animal eat its own kind? This question might seem shocking and even disturbing at first glance. It seems like a cruel and unusual act, something that goes against the very fabric of nature's harmony. It is a question that has puzzled naturalists for centuries, leading to countless studies and observations in the wild. However, cannibalism, the act of an animal consuming all or part of another animal of its own species, is more common than you might think. From insects to mammals, many species engage in this behavior. Although seemingly gruesome, cannibalism is not an act of malice. It is a complex behavior driven by various factors. It is a survival strategy, a way for animals to thrive in a world of limited resources and constant competition. In some cases, it ensures the survival of the fittest, while in others, it helps control population numbers. Join me as we delve into the fascinating, albeit unsettling, world of cannibalism in the animal kingdom. We will explore the reasons behind this behavior, the species that practice it, and the impact it has on ecosystems. From the praying mantis that consumes its mate to the polar bear that turns to cannibalism in times of scarcity, we will uncover the surprising truths behind this natural phenomenon. So, prepare yourself for a journey into one of nature's most controversial and intriguing survival strategies. Cannibalism is a surprising and often disturbing phenomenon. It occurs in a wide range of animal species, from insects to mammals. While it might seem counterintuitive for animals to consume their own kind, cannibalism can provide several advantages in the struggle for survival. These advantages can include the elimination of rivals, access to easy and readily available nutrition, and even population control within a species. While cannibalism may seem like a taboo subject, it is a natural part of the animal kingdom. Another form is filial cannibalism, where parents eat their own offspring. This can be a response to stress, overpopulation, or the presence of weak or deformed offspring. A third form is size-structured cannibalism, where larger individuals prey on smaller ones. This is often seen in fish and amphibians. Environmental stressors, such as drought or habitat loss, can also lead to cannibalism. In these situations, competition for resources intensifies, and cannibalism becomes a desperate measure to ensure survival. In some cases, cannibalism may even be a learned behavior passed down through generations. Section 5. Cannibalism and Population Control Although seemingly grim, cannibalism can play a role in regulating populations. By reducing the number of individuals competing for resources, cannibalism can prevent overpopulation and ensure the long-term survival of a species. This is particularly important for species with high reproductive rates. For example, some fish species lay thousands of eggs. If all of these eggs hatched and survived, the population would quickly outstrip its resources. Cannibalism helps to keep these populations in check. Section 6 Cannibalism and Prey-Prey Dynamics Cannibalism can also influence the delicate balance between predators and prey. When predator populations are high, cannibalism can reduce their numbers, providing some relief for prey species. Conversely, when prey populations are low, predators may turn on each other, further reducing their numbers and allowing prey populations to recover. This intricate interplay between cannibalism, predator populations and prey populations highlights the complexity of ecological relationships. It shows that even seemingly gruesome behaviors can have far-reaching consequences for entire ecosystems. Section 7. The Benefits of Cannibalism While cannibalism may seem like a negative behavior, it can provide several benefits for animals. Firstly, it is an easy and efficient way to obtain a nutritious meal. Cannibalistic animals don't need to expend energy hunting and killing prey. They can simply consume their own kind. Secondly, cannibalism can eliminate competitors, increasing the chances of survival and reproduction for the remaining individuals. This is especially important in environments with limited resources. Section 8. Cannibalism in Insects. A world of examples. In the vast and diverse animal kingdom, cannibalism is a fascinating and often shocking behavior that can be observed in many species. Among insects, this behavior is particularly prevalent and serves various purposes, from survival to reproduction. The insect world is rife with examples of cannibalism. This behavior, while seemingly brutal, plays a crucial role in the life cycles and ecological balance of these creatures. 
It can be a strategy for survival, a means to eliminate competition, or a way to ensure the continuation of the species. Perhaps the most iconic example is the praying mantis. These fascinating insects are known for their predatory skills and their unique mating behaviors, which have intrigued scientists and nature enthusiasts alike. Female praying mantises are notorious for devouring their mates during or after copulation. This act, while seemingly cruel, is a natural part of their reproductive process. By consuming the male, the female gains vital nutrients that are essential for the development of her eggs. This gruesome act provides the female with essential nutrients to produce eggs. The nutrients obtained from the male can significantly increase the chances of survival for the offspring, making this behavior a crucial aspect of the praying mantis's life cycle. Another striking example is found in certain species of termites. Termites are social insects that live in highly organized colonies, and their survival often depends on the collective actions of the colony members. When threatened by predators, soldier termites will rupture their own bodies, releasing a sticky and toxic substance that ensnares and kills their enemies. This self-sacrificial behavior is a form of cannibalism, as the termites essentially use their own bodies as a weapon to protect the colony. This act of self-sacrifice protects the colony, but also demonstrates an extreme form of cannibalism. By sacrificing themselves, the soldier termites ensure the survival of the colony, highlighting the complex and often harsh realities of life in the insect world. These examples of cannibalism in insects illustrate the diverse strategies that these creatures employ to survive and thrive in their environments. From the praying mantis's reproductive cannibalism to the termite's self-sacrificial defense, these behaviors are a testament to the adaptability and resilience of insects. Section 9. Cannibalism in Amphibians and Reptiles, a Slimy Affair Cannibalism is not uncommon in the amphibian and reptile world. For example, cane toads are known to consume their own tadpoles. This behavior helps to reduce competition for resources and ensure the survival of the strongest individuals. Similarly, some species of snakes, such as the king cobra, will consume other snakes, including members of their own species. This behavior is often driven by competition for food or territory. Section 10. Cannibalism in Fish Survival of the Hungriest In the aquatic realm, cannibalism is a common occurrence, particularly among fish. Sharks, for instance, are known for intrauterine cannibalism. Inside the womb, sand tiger shark embryos will consume their siblings, ensuring that only the strongest and most developed shark survives to be born. This strategy, although brutal, guarantees that the surviving offspring has the best chance of survival in the open ocean. Section 11. Cannibalism, a Natural Phenomenon Cannibalism, while unsettling to us, is a natural part of the animal kingdom. It is a behavior that has been observed in a wide variety of species, from insects to mammals, and even in some birds. It is a behavior that has evolved over millions of years in response to various environmental pressures and survival challenges. In some cases, it is a last resort for survival, while in others, it is a strategic choice to ensure the continuation of the species. From ensuring the survival of the fittest offspring to regulating populations and influencing predator-prey dynamics, cannibalism plays a complex and often crucial role in the delicate balance of nature. For instance, in times of food scarcity, consuming weaker or surplus offspring can provide the necessary nutrients for the survival of the stronger individuals. So the next time you find yourself captivated by a nature documentary, remember that beneath the beauty and serenity lies a world of survival, competition, and occasionally cannibalism. This behavior, though harsh, is a testament to the resilience and adaptability of life on Earth. It reminds us that nature operates on principles that are often beyond our understanding, driven by the relentless pursuit of survival and the perpetuation of life. In the grand tapestry of life, every action, no matter how brutal it may seem, has its place and purpose. Cannibalism is just one of the many strategies that animals use to navigate the challenges of their environment and ensure their survival.